Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. I mentioned in last week's What's for Dinner video that I asked my husband to choose the meal plan for a week. So whatever it was that he wanted for dinner, he got to choose. Part of last week's What's for Dinner video were his choices, and the first couple from this week's video are also his choices. So he requested Asian flank steak. I've made this many, many times over the years. I think I've shared this before on my channel. I'm pretty sure I have. I'll find that video and link it in the description box below. So if you'd like to see more detailed instructions on how I made this, check out that video. Here are the ingredients I'm using for the marinade. Brown sugar, low sodium soy sauce, vinegar, sesame oil, red pepper flakes, fresh ginger, fresh garlic, and then flank steak. I got this flank steak from Good Chop. I am going to use half of it for this recipe and then set the other half aside uh, for a different recipe. So I'm just going to mix up the ingredients and then add them to a Ziploc bag along with the flank steak. And I like to marinate this overnight, but if you only have 30 minutes or an hour, that's fine as well. But of course, the longer you can allow it to marinate, the better it will be. Here are the ingredients you'll need for the sesame noodles. You'll need brown sugar, sesame oil, some ball, soy sauce, rice vinegar, oil, not pictured is some hot water, minced garlic, and then the recipe calls for whole wheat thin spaghetti. I could have swore that I had spaghetti on hand. I had every other kind of pasta, but not spaghetti. Closest thing I had to it was fettuccine, so that's just what I'm going to use. Now, again, I'll have my video linked in the description box below, but I'll also include the recipes for um, both the sesame noodles and the flank steak. For the sesame noodles, really easy. All I'm going to do is mix up all of the ingredients except the noodles and cook the noodles according to the package instructions, drain them really well, and then mix the noodles and the sauce, and then you can add whatever vegetables you'd like. Now for the flank steak, I took it out of the refrigerator about an hour before I was ready to start cooking it. I just cooked it up in a cast iron skillet over the stove until it was done to our liking. I let it rest for about 10 minutes and then I cut it against the grain in pretty thin slices. Here are the finished sesame noodles. I added about a half a package of stir fry vegetables that I got at Walmart. The stir fry vegetables had broccoli, carrots, and snow peas in it. And here's my husband's plate. So we have some of the flank steak and the sesame noodles, and this was yummy. I tasted a little bit of both, but this night I just really wasn't in the mood for the Asian flank steak and sesame noodles. I don't know why, but tuna helpers sounded good to me <laughs> for some odd reason. My husband is not a fan at all of tuna casserole, tuna helper, so this was all me, <laughs> but I just cooked it according to the package instructions, and during the last like minute or so of cooking, I added in some frozen peas, and I just served mine on a paper plate, less cleanup. And this was our dinner this night, Asian flank steak for the hubby and tuna casserole for me. And we had plenty of leftovers for lunch for at least a day, maybe even the next day. For dinner the next night, we did breakfast for dinner. So here's what I'm going to use to make the dinner. I'm going to make some scrambled eggs. I have these hash brown patties from Trader Joe's in my freezer that I really need to use up. These have been in here for forever. I'm going to cook these in the air fryer. I have some bacon that I got from Good Chop, and so I'm just going to bake that in the oven. And then I have this package of Southern Biscuit Biscuit Mix. I got this little package at Food Lion. I have heard Miss Tammy from Collard Valley Cooks um, she has used this many, many times and swears by it. And I got this little package months ago at Food Lion and I just haven't used it yet. And I figured tonight is the night. So I'm just going to cook these according to the package instructions. So basically you just take the package and you add in buttermilk. That's all you have to do. And so just like we're making regular biscuits, I'm going to combine the buttermilk and the package mixture until it forms a dough. And then I'm going to um, just flour my work surface. And I like to knead my biscuit dough just a few times, maybe eight or nine times. You really don't wanna overwork your biscuit dough. You wanna be really gentle with it. So once I've kneaded it just a few times, I like to pat it out with my hands. If you like to use a rolling pin, hey, go for it. It's your kitchen, you do you. But I'm going to pat out my biscuits and cut them out with a biscuit cutter. 
I'm placing them into a baking dish. I'm just using a round cake pan. You can do a cast iron skillet if you prefer. But I buttered the bottom of it. I'm going to add my biscuits. I'm going to brush a little melted butter on top of the biscuits and then just put these into the oven. I think the package said to bake these at 450 degrees for, I can't remember, but I think it was like 12 to 15 minutes. I'm going to make some scrambled eggs. So in this bowl, I'm going to crack my eggs. Now it's my husband and I, and I normally do five eggs. He normally eats a little bit more than I do. So I pretty much do three for him, two for me. Then I like to add in a couple tablespoons of milk, or in this case, I'm using half and half. That's just what I've got on hand and need to use up today. I like to season my eggs with some Tony Saturies along with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I just whisk everything together really well with a fork. Now, I like to cook my eggs kind of low and slow. Today, I had my heat up a little bit higher than normal. Usually, I cook these on like medium-low heat. Just add a little butter to a um, nonstick skillet, and I like to use a spatula. And I just cook the eggs and continue to scramble them until they're done to our liking. All right, here's that finished bacon. So when I cook bacon, most of the time I cook it in my oven. I like to lay wire racks out on a cookie sheet, add my bacon, and then I put it into the oven at normally about 425. And I bake it for, it depends on how thick the bacon is and how well you like your bacon done. I would say anywhere between 12 and 20 minutes. Here are those frozen hash brown patties. I just sprayed it with a little cooking spray and I cooked them in the air fryer at 400 degrees for I think it was like four or five minutes on one side, flipped it over and cooked it for another four or five minutes. You just wanna make sure that you cook them until they're nice and golden brown. Here are the finished biscuits. Once they were out of the oven, I brushed a little bit of the leftover melted butter on them. We've got the hash brown patties and then the bacon. I like my bacon crispier than what my husband does. He likes his limp. So I always take his bacon out and then put mine back in the oven for a couple minutes. We've got the scrambled eggs. I added a little bit of shredded cheese at the end. For our eggs, we like ketchup, and then my husband likes a little hot sauce. Here I have some small batch homemade strawberry jam. I'll talk more about this in just a second, and then I have some spreadable butter. All right, here's a picture of our plate. So we have the biscuits, the jam, the eggs, the hash brown patty, the bacon, and I also served up some orange smiles. That biscuit mix was delicious. I highly recommend that. I had to go to Food Lion the next day, and I picked up a few more packages of that biscuit mix. They also have it in like... Um, the same shape and size that like flour comes in, um, but I just got the packages for us because it's just the two of us. I thought that would be easier. Now that small batch strawberry jam, I have made this several times over the years. It has come out perfect every single time. It's from the Crouton Cracker Jacks. I'll have his video linked in the description box below. It's small batch, so it just makes a little bit, and it's so, so easy. It's three ingredients, sugar, strawberries, and lemon juice, and you don't need any special equipment or anything. So if you're new to jam making or canning, or maybe if you have a small family like I do, I highly recommend you all give this recipe a try. Like I said, I'll have it linked in the description box below. This was dinner. So, so yummy. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for Italian sliders. I saw this on Taylor Elmer's channel. I'll have her video linked in the description box below. My oven is preheating to 350 degrees. I'm going to take my slider rolls, or in this case, I'm using Hawaiian rolls. You can use slider buns if you'd prefer. I'm going to cut these in half horizontally and then add the bottoms of the rolls to a greased casserole dish. Now, I'm having the recipe, the full recipe makes, I believe, like a 9 by 13 or 12 sliders. But I'm just going to save the other six rolls and do something else with them. To the bottoms, I'm adding some ham, salami, and pepperoni. And you can add as much or as little meat as you prefer. Next, I'm going to add my provolone cheese. Now, I added the cheese to all of the sliders, but you'll see in just a second that I take the cheese off of some of them, and that's because I forgot that I needed to add the other two ingredients to my husband's sliders. So I'm adding some banana pepper rings and roasted red pepper slices. I chopped the roasted bell peppers up just a little bit because they were in strips. I didn't prefer these on my slider, so like I said, I just add them to my husband's. I added the cheese back on, and then I'm adding the tops. Next, I'm taking some melted butter. I'm going to add in a little bit of Italian seasoning, 
stir that together and then brush the tops of the slider rolls with the Italian flavored butter. And then that's it. This is gonna get covered with foil. This is going to go into the preheated oven and bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then I remove the foil and bake them for about another seven minutes. For one of my sides tonight, I'm cooking up some of the Alexia sweet potato fries. I decided that I wanted them a little on the sweet side tonight. So in this little bowl here, I have a little bit of brown sugar and cinnamon, and I mixed that together until it was combined really well, and I'm going to sprinkle that over the fries once they're done. For my other side, I'm going to make a quick side salad. I'm going to add a little bit of spring mix to my plate. Next, I'm adding some goat cheese crumbles. Normally, I like to crumble up some honey goat cheese, but I wasn't at Aldi, and this is what they had at Food Lion, so I'm using that. I'm adding some candied pecans and dried cranberries, and then I'm using this sweet uh, balsamic vinaigrette from Kraft. This was my first time using it, and it was good. I'd get that again. Here are the finished sliders out of the oven. And here's a picture of my plate. Um, my husband ate later this night, he was at the gym, so I've got a couple of the sliders, some of the sweet potato fries that I tossed in that cinnamon sugar, and then the salad. This was super delicious. We both really enjoyed those Italian sliders. We'll definitely make those again. For dinner the next night, I made Korean beef bowls. This was the last of Gary's choices from the meal plan that he did. I made this once before on my channel a few months ago. I'll have that video linked in the description box below. It was actually sent to me by one of you all. Her name is Christy, and we really, really enjoyed this. It's super delicious, and best of all, it's really quick and easy. This takes like 15 minutes tops to put together, so let me show you how to make this. First, you'll need some ground beef. Now, I lucked out and found this Laura's Lean Beef on sale at Kroger, uh, but I know with the price of meat right now, it can be a little on the expensive side. So I would imagine you could use ground turkey or ground chicken in this, and it would be equally delicious. And probably to stretch the meat a little bit, you could also add like some really finely diced mushrooms, maybe even zucchini just to kind of stretch it out. But super easy. All I'm going to do is brown up my ground beef. This is lean, so I didn't have to drain it, but you may want to drain it. In this measuring cup, I've got my brown sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, red pepper flakes, and ground ginger and uh, the minced garlic. I'm going to whisk that until it's combined really well and then add that to my uh, browned ground beef. Give that a stir and then just let this simmer for like two or three minutes. That's it. Like I said, super, super easy and quick. And I mean, really the only time you're spending is the amount of time that it takes you to brown up some ground beef. Now here's the finished uh, Korean beef. Along with that, I have just some steamed rice. I'd made this steamed rice a couple days before. I cooked it in my rice cooker. Um, I have a problem though with warming rice up in the microwave. It always gets really crunchy on me. And so I looked it up on Google and found where it suggested to take like leftover white rice, add a couple tablespoons of water, cover it with a damp paper towel, and then pop it in the microwave for like maybe a minute. Um, and really how much water and how long you cook it just depends on how much rice. But I did that and it turned out really, really well. It wasn't crunchy at all. To make this quick and easy, you could use uh, microwavable rice or the uh, like rice pouches. Now to serve this up, I just laid down a bed of the rice, added some of the ground beef, some sesame seeds and chopped onions. And then for my husband's bowl, we found this kimchi mayo. I think we got this at like Home Goods several months ago. Um, normally I would, not normally, I've only made this one other time before. <laughs> Last time I added kimchi to this, but this time I didn't have a chance to stop and get any. So I just added some of the kimchi mayo to my husband's and this was delicious. Like I said, I highly recommend and you all give this recipe a try. For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe for shrimp tacos. I saw this on Angela's channel at Simply Mama Cooks. I'll have it linked in the description box below. She made these, I think, a few weeks ago, and they just look delicious. They look so good. Now, I am going to horribly butcher the name of this dish if I try to pronounce it. So I will just say the English translation of this dish, I believe, are the governor's tacos. But like I said, I'll have her video linked in the description box below. Now, we're gonna start out by making homemade tortillas, which I'll explain a little bit more about that in just a second. But to get started, in my bowl, I'm going to add in my flour and my salt. I'm going to stir that until it's well combined. Next, I'm going to add in my lard. That's just what I'm choosing to use. You could use shortening, of course, if you would prefer to do that. I'm going to take a fork and mix the lard in until it resembles 
uh, breadcrumbs. Now, like I said, about the tortillas, they definitely intimidate me. I have never made tortillas by myself before. I was at a friend's house like five or six years ago and she was making homemade tortillas and I kind of helped her. Um, but so I was definitely intimidated to make these. I use the recipe that my friend had given to me that she uses. I didn't follow Angela's recipe exactly, but they're very similar. Um, but again, you can use Angela's. I'll have that linked in the description box below. So once I have mixed in that lard, I am going to take some hot water. Um, the recipe that I use suggested to use like warm tap water and then pop it in the microwave for maybe 45 seconds or so. You want to add that water and then stir the dough until it comes together. And then I'm going to lightly um, flour my countertop. And this is honestly, this is really, really similar to making biscuits, to be honest with you. <laughs> Except instead of buttermilk or milk or cream, we just used hot water. Um, so if you've made biscuits before, you can, you can do this. So like I said, I am going to take the dough, put it out on my floured counter. I kneaded it for a few minutes. And once I kneaded it, I uh, took a bench scraper and divided the dough up. Now, how many dough balls you get really depends on how uh, what size tortillas you're making. And just a quick note, I did half um, the recipe. Uh, I wasn't sure how they turn out. I didn't want to waste all the time and energy <laughs> if they didn't turn out well. So once I have my dough balls, I'm going to add them back into the bowl. And then I took a damp paper towel, added that to the bowl, and then I allowed the dough to sit for about 20 minutes. After the dough has rested, I remove the paper towel. I'm adding a little sprinkle of flour to the counter using my hand. I pressed it out a little bit, and then I'm going to use the rolling pin and roll the tortilla out. Um, to its desired thickness. And you wanna try to be careful with the flour, at least the recipes that I read anyway, suggested not trying to add too much flour back in. All right, so once I've got all of my circles rolled out, I have this little griddle. I've got it over about medium, medium high heat, and I'm just gonna cook the tortillas for about 30 to 45 seconds per side until they get slightly brown, and they will start to bubble up when they do that. All right, so once I've got all my tortillas cooked, I'm going to um, switch skillets. In this skillet, I'm adding a little bit of oil. I'm going to add in some diced onion, diced tomato, and diced poblano pepper. I'm adding some salt and pepper, and I'm going to cook these for a few minutes until they're tender. Next, I'm going to add in my shrimp. I've drained these really well and patted them dry with a paper towel. Now, if you don't like shrimp or can't have it, I'm sure you could probably use steak or chicken, whatever you like. I'm sure it's not authentic, but it'd be delicious. Now, for the seasonings, you can add whatever seasonings you like. I'm adding some smoked paprika, some of this Auntie Nono's Everything seasoning, some salt, pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. And I'm going to stir that and then cook this until the shrimp is cooked all the way through. While my shrimp is cooking, I'm going to make a quick guacamole. In this bowl, I've got a couple of ripe avocados. I'm going to mash them really well with a fork. I'm adding some salt and fresh lime juice. Normally, I would also add some pico or tomatoes and onions and cilantro, but in this case, I'm serving some pico de gallo with it. This is just store-bought pico, and I know we'll mix the two together anyway, so I'm just keeping it simple. But once that's mashed up, I'm just going to place it into my serving bowl to eat along with our tacos. Now I've got that same griddle skillet over about medium heat. I didn't clean it or anything. It's just from where I fried the tortillas up. I'm adding a little pat of butter. I'm going to add one of our tortillas and then I'm using some of this queso quesadilla cheese. This was my first time using it and we really enjoyed it. I'm gonna sprinkle that cheese on the bottom, add some of my shrimp and vegetable mixture, add just a little more sprinkling of cheese on top. I'm going to allow that to cook for just a couple minutes until the cheese starts to melt. And then I'm going to fold that over and again, just cook it on both sides until it's golden brown. And here's the finished taco. I don't know if you can tell from this, but that cheese is just melty and dreamy. All right, here is that store-bought pico. You could, of course, make homemade if you'd like. And our guacamole along with some chips. Here's the plate. So we have the tacos, the chips, the guacamole, and the pico. The tortillas were delicious, and those shrimp tacos were so, so good. This was delicious. 
For dinner the next night, I did not feel like cooking. I told my husband he was on his own. He asked if we could order a pizza. It just sounded really good to him. He'd been craving pizza. We used to order all the time from Papa John's, but several months ago, they changed their crust recipe. We've ordered it a couple times since then, and we just don't prefer it anymore. And so he asked if we could try Marco's pizza. I will have to say Marco's pizza is a little on the pricey side to me personally, but we used a coupon. We got an order of their cheesy bread, and then we got a medium pizza half of it I can't remember what it was called but it was basically a supreme pizza we did half of it that way and then the other half with just plain pepperoni I don't prefer like the olives and uh, banana peppers and all that that my husband loves um, now I will have to say though the pizza and the the cheesy bread especially they were tasty they were really good so if we can find like a coupon or a sale I definitely order from Marco's again but this was our dinner this night The last dinner in this week's video was St. Patrick's Day and we did fish and chips. Now I've shared how I make like homemade fried fish before on my channel. I'll have that video linked in the description box below. But for this night, I just went with easy. I got this CPAC Budweiser beer battered cod and I got this at Publix. So I'm going to cook this up in the air fryer and then I'm using some of these Orida crinkle cut fries. I just baked these in the oven according to the package instructions. Here are the finished uh, fish fillets and the finished fries. My husband likes to sprinkle malt vinegar on his fish and chips or fries, and I whipped up a quick tartar sauce. It's really easy. I don't measure. I just eyeball it. I use mayonnaise, relish, a little lemon juice, salt, and pepper, and mix it until it's combined really well. All right, and here are the plates. So we have the fish, the fries, the tartar sauce, and we did add some ketchup to dip our fries in. Now, that CPAC fish... I had bought that once before when it first came out, but I think it was on like BOGO at Publix and I got it half price. To be completely honest with you, I do not feel like it was worth the price at all. The box was $9 and we only got four pieces of fish and I don't know if you can tell or not, but they're really pretty small. Um, so I don't feel like full price, it's a good value. Um, if you know you could get it on sale, I would recommend you all give it a try, but again, that's just a personal preference. It was good. I just don't feel like it's worth the price, but it was an easy dinner and it was delicious and it was nice to be able to celebrate St. Patrick's Day together. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.